What's going on guys? Randall here, Grunt Proof. We're out here in the German forest, taking a nice little walk. You guys wanted to see more How Soldiers Do Stuff videos. One of those was shelter. If you missed my How Soldiers Sleep video, be sure to check that out as well. So today we're going to talk about the US Army Poncho, specifically how soldiers use it as a shelter. Let's go. All right guys, so all you need for this is whatever shelter you're going to use. This is the US Army issue poncho. I've had it for 18 years. This thing is a beast. And two bungee cords, and then of course your preferred sleep system. You're also going to need four pegs. I like to carry my own because they're super light and I barely notice them. If you wanna go out and make your own in the woods, go ahead and do that. Let's get to it. Now, typically we wouldn't just set up this much in the open like that. You're gonna look for cover, concealment and all that. But I just wanted to give you guys a good shot of this so you can see everything. Good rule of thumb for the height to start setting up is for me, no more than knee height. And with the five by seven poncho or tarp, that gives you the perfect dimensions to get a good A-frame. If you've got your feet downhill like you should and you want to have the poncho tipped just a little bit for possible rain runoff in this direction, you can lower it a little bit on the foot side. All right, well, that's it for the shelter. I like to leave one corner open to get in and out easier. So for this setup, we're going with a non-tactical or permissive environment where you don't just have to sleep in the mud. You actually have time and it's an environment where you actually can build a shelter. If you're not build a shelter, well, you're just sleeping hopefully in your bivy in the mud. As far as grunts go in the field, there are a few principles to keep in mind. Number one, your shelter has to be very simple. So it's easy to break down, easy to set up. You can do it at night because you may not be able to find your headlight. You may not have your night vision. You may have to just feel your way around and set this thing up in pitch black. Grunts get pretty good at that. Number two, which is also very important, is it has to protect you from the elements. There's no point in bringing a shelter out there if it's not actually going to keep the rain off you or keep you warm. Another key is even in a non-tactical environment, grunts typically train like they're always in a tactical environment, even if you're allowed to build a shelter. That means it's gotta be pretty low profile and not stand out like you're at the Hilton Hotel. Another thing is we want it to be as quiet as possible. The USGI poncho is probably the quietest rain gear I've ever seen in the military. So that helps bungee cords don't really make any noise and besides moving around a little bit you can actually set this up fairly quietly now we'll go ahead and add our sleep system some people like to do their sleep system first and then build their shelter over it either way works you may have noticed i'm carrying the force protector gear marpac ruck go check out that grunt proof if you haven't seen it because this is an outstanding bag one reason i like carrying this for camping is it has a sleep mat built into it I've not been able to find an official R value for it, but it does insulate from the cold ground. I have slept with it in the winter, works great. Of course you want to waterproof your ruck, otherwise you're going to have to throw it up under your poncho. And since the thing is only seven feet long, you're gonna limit your space. So waterproof your ruck. And obviously if it's raining, I'm going to pull it in anyway, so I'm not having runoff down my ruck. Your hydration bladder can be used as a pillow. And of course, I've got the MSS bivy and the jungle bag. As I've said before, no matter what I'm doing, where I'm sleeping or what I'm carrying, I always have my bivy with me. That's about it. Leave your stuff zipped up and rolled up. If you're not in there, that'll keep critters from climbing in. So once I'm ready to climb in, I just take that last stake. Notice I have these giant loops that I've talked about before. That way I can easily loop my stakes through anything and remove them completely. 
Since this is down to the ground, I'll throw my stake into the poncho grommet. So one reason I will loop these around there anyway, I'll show you when I pack up, is so I can pack up a lot faster. All I gotta do is rip the stakes up. I'm not gonna lose them when I'm throwing the poncho around. I'll gather the stakes up, get a handful of those, and then start to roll them up into my poncho. That makes for a fast setup and breakdown. And keeping positive control of them also keeps me from just randomly throwing them in there. So when I pack them into the ruck in a hurry, I'm not stabbing my shelter. Also, let's say in high wind, one of the stakes comes out. The poncho will be flapping around, but I won't lose my stake. If you're in a heavy rain situation, get your e-tool or maybe even a big stick and make yourself a little bit of a trench. Also, I've mentioned this before. The hood on my poncho has been tied since I was issued this in 2003. I don't think I've ever opened it. You can use rubber bands or whatever, but most of us would just tie them. You guys have asked this question many times in other videos. Randall, what if you don't have trees? Well, one variation you could do, a lot of times if we don't have trees, we'll use our vehicles. I've actually seen many guys just climb into their bivy and hunker down and go to sleep. Sometimes you'd see them throw their poncho over them just for a little bit of extra protection. It's just how it goes sometimes. Otherwise, what you could do, throw your sleep system down first stake out the bottom when you're ready to go to bed crawl in feet first and then secure your poncho onto your ruck and that'll give you a little bit of overhead so you don't just have it laying on your face that's one thing alice was really good for because with the frame it would stand up a little bit especially if you had it leaned up against a tree and if it got really bad you could always just unclip it from your ruck and pull it down over your head another variation i've seen guys implement is a bug net the army used to issue a bug net to guys depending on where they were stationed in a lot of cases you could go to supply and draw one out these days you typically have to buy your own you can basically just hook it into your bungees and that'll bring it up off of you and the army issued one was so big at this height you could actually drape it under you and nothing was going to come in there well there you have it guys i hope you enjoyed this maybe you learned something or at least it was entertaining let me know what you thought down below so if you want to see anything else related to how soldiers do things also let me know down below in keeping with the principles of this shelter i'm going to show you just how fast it can be taken down as long as your rock is not stuffed from the beginning all you got to do is break this down roll it all up into a ball and shove it down into your ruck and you can be moving out within five minutes make sure you like and subscribe and i'll see you guys in the next video take care of yourselves If you listen closely, you can hear all the keyboard drill sergeants at home yelling at me to move faster. So we got all the stakes in our hand so we don't put holes in our poncho. Get it into a nice small kind of ball. Got our bungee cords. Shelter is gone. get this silly pad packed up I always forget how they had it how they have you do it there we go Can't be crushing your ultra light gear like this and forcing a zipper shut. There you have it, folks. See you next time.